Old Latin, also known as Early Latin or Archaic Latin, refers to the Latin language in the period before 75 BC, before the age of Classical Latin. In New and Contemporary Latin, this language is called Prisca Latinitas, ancient Latin, rather than Vetus Latina, Old Latin. As Vetus Latina is used to refer to a set of biblical texts written in Late Latin, the use of old, early, and archaic has been standard in publications of Old Latin writings since at least the 18th century. The definition is not arbitrary, but the terms refer to writings with spelling conventions and word forms not generally found in works written under the Roman Empire. This article presents some of the major differences. The earliest known specimen of the Latin language appears on the Prinaste fibula. A new analysis performed in 2011 declared it to be genuine, beyond any reasonable doubt and dating from the Orientalizing period, in the first half of the 7th century BC. Philological constructs The Old Time Language The concept of Old Latin is as old as the concept of Classical Latin, both dating to at least as early as the late Roman Republic. In that period Cicero, along with others, noted that the language he used every day, presumably the upper-class city Latin, included lexical items and phrases that were heirlooms from a previous time, which he called verborum vetustus prisca, translated as, the old age, time of language. During the classical period, prisca latinitas, prisca latina and other idioms using the adjective always meant these remnants of a previous language, which, in the Roman philology, was taken to be much older in fact than it really was. Viri Prasai, old time men, were the population of Latium before the founding of Rome. Topic: The Four Latins of Isidore. In the late Latin period, when classical Latin was behind them, the Latin and Greek-speaking grammarians were faced with multiple phases or styles within the language. Isidore of Seville reports a classification scheme that had come into existence in or before his time. The four Latins. Latinas autum linguas quatuor esse quidum dixirunt. They were Prisca, spoken before the founding of Rome, when Janus and Saturn ruled Latium, to which he dated the Carmen Salaire, Latina, dated from the time of King Latinus, in which period he placed the laws of the Twelve Tables, Romana, essentially equal to Classical Latin, and Mixta, mixed, Classical Latin and Vulgar Latin, which is known today as Late Latin. The scheme persisted with little change for some thousand years after Isidore. Topic: <inaudible> Old Latin. In 1874, John Wordsworth used this definition: "By early Latin, I understand Latin of the whole period of the Republic, which is separated very strikingly, both in tone and in outward form, from that of the Empire." Although the differences are striking and can be easily identified by Latin readers, they are not such as to cause a language barrier. Latin speakers of the empire had no reported trouble understanding Old Latin, except for the few texts that must date from the time of the kings, mainly songs. Thus, the laws of the Twelve Tables from the early Republic were comprehensible, but the Carmen Salaire, probably written under Numa Pompilius, was not entirely and still remains unclear. An opinion concerning Old Latin, of a Roman man of letters in the Middle Republic, survives. The historian, Polybius, read, The first treaty between Rome and Carthage, which he says, dates from the consulship of Lucius Junius Brutus and Marcus Horatius, the first consuls after the expulsion of the kings. Knowledge of the early consuls is somewhat obscure, but Polybius also states that the treaty was formulated 28 years after Xerxes I crossed into Greece, that is, in 452 BC, about the time of the Decemviri, when the constitution of the Roman Republic was being defined. Polybius says of the language of the treaty, "...the ancient Roman language differs so much from the modern that it can only be partially made out, and that after much application by the most intelligent men." There is no sharp distinction between Old Latin, as it was spoken for most of the Republic, and Classical Latin, but the earlier grades into the later. The end of the Republic was too late a termination for compilers after Wordsworth, Charles Edwin Bennett said, Early Latin is necessarily a somewhat vague term. 
Bell, De Locativi in Prisca Latinitate v et USU, Breslau, 1889, sets the later limit at 75 BC. A definite date is really impossible, since archaic Latin does not terminate abruptly, but continues even down to imperial times. Bennett's own date of 100 BC did not prevail but rather Bell's 75 BC became the standard as expressed in the four-volume Loeb Library and other major compendia. Over the 377 years from 452 to 75 BC, Old Latin evolved from being partially comprehensible by classicists with study to being easily read by scholars. Corpus Old Latin authored works began in the 3rd century BC. These are complete or nearly complete works under their own name surviving as manuscripts copied from other manuscripts in whatever script was current at the time. In addition are fragments of works quoted in other authors. Numerous inscriptions placed by various methods painting, engraving, embossing on their original media survive just as they were except for the ravages of time. Some of these were copied from other inscriptions. No inscription can be earlier than the introduction of the Greek alphabet into Italy but none survive from that early date. The imprecision of archaeological dating makes it impossible to assign a year to any one inscription, but the earliest survivals are probably from the 6th century BC. Some texts, however, that survive as fragments in the works of classical authors, had to have been composed earlier than the Republic, in the time of the monarchy. These are listed below. Topic. Fragments and inscriptions Notable Old Latin fragments with estimated dates include The Carmen Salaire chant put forward in classical times as having been sung by the Salian Brotherhood formed by Numa Pompilius, approximate date 700 BC The Prinaste Fibula date from first half of the 7th century BC The Forum Inscription illustration, right c. 550 BC under the monarchy. The Duinos inscription c. 500 BC the Castor Pollux dedication c. 500 BC the Garigliano Bowl c. 500 BC the Lapis Satricanus early 5th century BC the preserved fragments of the laws of the Twelve Tables traditionally, 449 BC, attested much later. The Tiber pedestal c. 400 BC, the Scipionum Elohia epitaph of Lucius Cornelius Scipio Barbatus, c. 280 BC, epitaph of Lucius Cornelius Scipio, consul 259 BC, epitaph of Publius Cornelius Scipio, pf. P. N. Africanus died about 170 BC. The Senatus Consultum de Bacchanalibus, 186 BC. The vase inscription from Ardea the Corcol altar fragments the Carmen Arval altar to the unknown divinity, 92 BC. Topic works of literature. The authors are as follows: Lucius Livius Andronicus, c. 280-260 BC, c. 200 BC, translator, founder of Roman drama Gnaeus Navius, c. 264 to 201 BC, dramatist, epic poet Titus Machius Plotus, c. 254 to 184 BC, dramatist, composer of comedies Quintus Ennius, 239 c. 169 BC, poet Marcus Pacuvius, c. 220–130 BC, tragic dramatist, poet Statius Cecilius 228–166 BC, comic dramatist Publius Terentius Offer 195–185, 159 BC, comic dramatist Quintus Fabius Pictor 3rd century BC, historian Lucius Cincius Alimentus 3rd century BC, military historian Marcus Porcius Cato 234–149 BC, Generalist, topical writer Gaius Acilius, second century BC, historian Lucius Accius, 170 c. 86 BC, tragic dramatist, philologist Gaius Lucilius, c. 160s, 103-102 BC, satirist Quintus Lutatius Catulus, second century BC, public officer, epigrammatist Aulus Furius Antius, second century BC, poet Gaius Julius Caesar Strabo Vopiscus, 130 BC to 87 BC, public officer, tragic dramatist Lucius Pomponius Bonaniensis, second century BC, comic dramatist, satirist Lucius. 
Lucius Cassius Hamina, second century BC; historian Lucius Calpurnius Piso Frugi, second century BC; historian Manius Manilius, second century BC; public officer, jurist Lucius Celius Antipater, second century BC; jurist, historian Publius Sempronius Acelio, 158 BC; after 91 BC, military officer, historian Gaius Sempronius Tuditanus, second century BC; jurist Lucius Afrunius, second and first centuries BC, comic dramatist Titus Albucius, second and first centuries BC, orator Publius Rutilius Rufus, 158 BC, after 78 BC, jurist Lucius Aelius Stilo Preconinus, 154 to 74 BC, philologist Quintus Claudius Quadrigarius, second and first centuries BC, historian Valerius Antius, second and first centuries BC, historian Lucius Cornelius Cicena, 121 to 67 BC, soldier, historian Quintus Cornificius, second and first centuries BC, rhetorician topic script Old Latin surviving in inscriptions is written in various forms of the Etruscan alphabet as it evolved into the Latin alphabet. The writing conventions varied by time and place until classical conventions prevailed. The works of authors in manuscript form were copied over into the scripts current in those later times. The original writing does not survive. Orthography Some differences between Old and Classical Latin were of spelling only, pronunciation is thought to be essentially as in Classical Latin. Single for double consonants, Marcellus for Marcellus Double vowels for long vowels, AARA for ERA Q for C before U, Pecunia for Pecunia C for G, keys for Gaius. These differences did not necessarily run concurrently with each other and were not universal, that is, C was used for both C and G. Topic. Phonology Topic. Stress Old Latin is thought to have had a strong stress on the first syllable of a word until about 250 BC. All syllables other than the first were unstressed and were subjected to greater amounts of phonological weakening. Starting around that year, the classical Latin stress system began to develop. It passed through at least one intermediate stage, found in Plotus, in which the stress occurred on the fourth last syllable in four-syllable words with all short syllables. Topic. Vowels and diphthongs Most original pi diphthongs were preserved in stressed syllables, including i, later a, a, later i, oi, later u, or sometimes o, o, from pi, e, u, and o, later u. The Old Latin diphthong a evolves in stages, a greater than greater than i. The intermediate sound was simply written e but must have been distinct from the normal long vowel e because subsequently merged with i while e did not. It is generally thought that was a higher sound than e, e g perhaps e versus during the time when both sounds existed. Even after the original vowel, a, had merged with i, the old spelling a continued to be used for a while, with the result that a came to stand for i and began to be used in the spelling of original occurrences of i that did not evolve from a e.g. in the genitive singular i, which is always spelled i in the oldest inscriptions but later on can be spelled either i or a. In unstressed syllables, asterisk oi and asterisk i had already merged into a by historic times except for one possible occurrence of poplo for populi people, in a late manuscript of one of the early songs. This eventually evolved to i according to the process described above. Old Latin often had different short vowels than classical Latin, reflecting sound changes that had not yet taken place. For example, the very early Duinos inscription has the form Duinos. Good. Later found as duonos and still later bonus. A countervailing change woe greater than we occurred around 150 BC in certain contexts, and many earlier forms are found e.g. earlier voto, voster, vorsus versus. Later veto, vester, versus. Old Latin frequently preserves original pi Proto-Indo-European thematic case endings os and om later us and um. Topic consonants intervocalic, s, pronounced z, was preserved up through 350 BC or so, at which point it changed into r, called rhoticism. This rhoticism had implications for declension, early classical Latin, honos, honoris from honos, honoses, later classical by analogy honor, honoris honor. 
Some old Latin texts preserve s in this position, such as the Carmen Arval's losses for Larry's. Later instances of single s between vowels are mostly due either to reduction of early ss after long vowels or diphthongs, borrowings, or late reconstructions. There are many unreduced clusters, e.g. umentum, later iumentum, beast of burden, losna, later luna, moon, courteous, saint locum, acc, later locum, place. Early do, dw, becomes later b, duinos greater than duonos greater than bonus good, duis greater than bis twice, duellum greater than bellum war. Final, d, occurred in ablatives later lost and in third-person secondary verbs later t. Topic morphology Topic Nouns Latin nouns are distinguished by grammatical case, with a termination, or suffix, determining its use in the sentence, subject, predicate, etc. A case for a given word is formed by suffixing a case ending to a part of the word common to all its cases called a stem. Stems are classified by their last letters as vowel or consonant. Vowel stems are formed by adding a suffix to a shorter and more ancient segment called a root. Consonant stems are the root roots end in consonants. The combination of the last letter of the stem and the case ending often results in an ending also called a case ending or termination. For example, the stem puella receives a case ending m to form the accusative case puellum in which the termination am is evident. In classical Latin textbooks, the declensions are named from the letter ending the stem or first, second, etc. to fifth. A declension may be illustrated by a paradigm, or listing of all the cases of a typical word. This method is less frequently applied to Old Latin, and with less validity. In contrast to Classical Latin, Old Latin reflects the evolution of the language from an unknown hypothetical ancestor spoken in Latium. The endings are multiple. Their use depends on time and locality. Any paradigm selected would be subject to these constraints and if applied to the language universally would result in false constructs, hypothetical words not attested in the Old Latin corpus. Nevertheless, the endings are illustrated below by quasi-classical paradigms. Alternative endings from different stages of development are given, but they may not be attested for the word of the paradigm. For example, in the second declension, asterisk campoi fields is unattested, but poplo peoples is attested. Topic first declension a, the a stem declension. The stems of nouns of this declension usually end in a and are typically feminine. A nominative case ending of s in a few masculines indicates the nominative singular case ending may have been originally s, parichitas for later parichita, but the s tended to get lost. In the nominative plural, i replaced original s as in the genitive singular, in the genitive singular, the s was replaced with i from the second declension, the resulting diphthong shortening to i subsequently becoming a. In a few cases the replacement did not take place, pater familias. Explanations of the late inscriptional aes are speculative. In the genitive plural, the regular ending is asim, classical arum by rhoticism and shortening of final o, but some nouns borrow om, classical um, from the second declension. In the dative singular, the final i is either long or short. The ending becomes a, a feronia or e fortune. In the accusative singular, Latin regularly shortens a vowel before final m. In the ablative singular, d was regularly lost after a long vowel. In the dative and ablative plural, the abos descending from Indo-European asterisk abos is used for feminines only debus. Asterisk ice greater than ice greater than as is adapted from ois of the o declension. In the vocative singular, an original short emerged with the shortened of the nominative. The locative case would not apply to such a meaning as puella, so Roma, which is singular, and Syracuse, which is plural, have been substituted. The locative plural has already merged with the ice form of the ablative. Topic second declension o, The stems of the nouns of the O declension end in O deriving from the O grade of Indo-European oblaut. Classical Latin evidences the development O greater than U. Nouns of this declension are either masculine or neuter. Nominative singulars ending in ros or ris syncopate the ending, asterisk agros greater than asterisk agrs greater than asterisk agers greater than asterisk ager greater than ager, the form ter three times for later ter many alternative spellings occur, as mentioned above, the sound change a greater than greater than i leads to numerous variations, including the reverse spelling a for i. This spelling eventually appears in the genitive singular as well, although I is earliest and the true ending, cf. populi Romanae, of the Roman people, which both spellings in the same inscription. Likewise, the sound change O S greater than us and om greater than om greater than um affect the nominative and accusative singular, and the genitive plural. 
One very early text has genitive osio, the Proto-Indo-European ending rather than i, and ending appearing only in Italo-Celtic. This form also appears in the closely related Feliscan language. In the genitive plural, um from Indo-European asterisk om survived in classical Latin words for coins and measures, otherwise it was eventually replaced by orum by analogy with first declension arum. The nominative, vocative plural masculine a comes from the Proto-Indo-European pronominal ending asterisk oi. The original ending oi appears in a late spelling in the word poplo i.e. poploi equals populi people in Sextus Pompeius Festus. The dative, ablative, locative plural ice comes from earlier ois, a merger of pi instrumental plural asterisk ois and locative plural asterisk oisu. The form ois appears in Sextus Pompeius Festus and a few early inscriptions. The Prenaste fibula has dative singular numasioi, representing Proto Indo European asterisk oi. A number of provincial texts have nominative plural ice later as from 190 BC on, with an added s, by some sort of analogy with other declensions. Zeeler notes that this form appears in literature only in pronouns and suggests that inscriptional examples added to nouns may be artificial i.e. not reflecting actual pronunciation. In the vocative singular, some nouns lose the e i.e. have a zero ending but not necessarily the same as in classical Latin. The e alternates regularly with us. The locative was a separate case in Old Latin but gradually became reduced in function, and the locative singular form eventually merged with the genitive singular by regular sound change. In the plural, the locative was captured by the ablative case in all Italic languages before Old Latin. Topic third declension consonant i, the consonant stem and i stem declension. This declension contains nouns that are masculine, feminine, and neuter. The stem ends in the root consonant, except in the special case where it ends in i, I stem declension. The i stem, which is a vowel stem, partially fused with the consonant stem in the pre-Latin period and went further in Old Latin. i, y and u, w can be treated either as consonants or as vowels, hence their classification as semi-vowels. Mixed stem declensions are partly like consonant stem and partly like i stem. Consonant stem declensions vary slightly depending on which consonant is root final, stop, r, n, s, etc. The paradigms below include a stop stem reg and an i stem For the consonant declension, in the nominative singular, the s was affixed directly to the stem consonant, but the combination of the two consonants produced modified nominatives over the Old Latin period. The case appears in different stages of modification in different words diachronically. The Latin neuter form not shown is the Indo-European nominative without stem ending, for example, core heart. The genitive singular endings include as in the dative singular, I succeeded A and E after 200 BC. In the accusative singular, M topic fourth declension, U, the U stem declension. The stems of the nouns of the U declension end in U and are masculine, feminine and neuter. In addition there is a u-stem declension, which contains only a few isolated words, such as sus, pig, and is not presented here. Topic fifth declension e, the e-stem declension. The fifth declension in Old Latin is almost morphologically identical to the one of Classical Latin. While the commonest ending in the nominative in both the singular and plural forms is s i.e. res, re, there have been recorded a few instances of either a shortened e with the addition of a consonantal i, as in res, or the abandonment of the nature of the e stem declension i.e. res, re. The genitive in the singular functions as the second declension, re the breve above the e is the result of an approximant or preceding a mid-open vowel. The genitive plural, in a like manner to the second declension, is formed primarily by esum the dative is generally formed with an a in the singular, and an ebos in the plural. The accusative, like all the other declensions, retains the labial m, shortening the quantity of the theme vowel. The ablative singular is a predictable ed, the plural is like the dative. The locative functions exactly in the singular as it does in the plural, with a short ice as the first although there are no singular-based city names in the singular besides the occasional Athenses. Topic Personal pronouns Personal pronouns are among the most common thing found in Old Latin inscriptions. In all three persons, the ablative singular ending is identical to the accusative singular. Topic relative pronoun In Old Latin, the relative pronoun is also another common concept, especially in inscriptions. The forms are quite inconsistent and leave much to be reconstructed by scholars. 
Topic verbs topic Old present and perfects There is little evidence of the inflection of Old Latin verb forms and the few surviving inscriptions hold many inconsistencies between forms. Therefore, the forms below are ones that are both proved by scholars through Old Latin inscriptions, and recreated by scholars based on other early Indo-European languages such as Greek and Italic dialects such as Oscan and Umbrian. Note that these Old Latin forms help demonstrate that, at least word finally, Spanish is the most phonologically conservative of the major Romance languages, compared to Italian, Portuguese, or Romanian. See also Italic languages Saturnian poetry References Topic Bibliography Allen, Frederick de Forest, eighteen ninety seven. Remnants of Early Latin. Yin. Bennett, Charles Edwin, eighteen ninety five. A Latin Grammar, with appendix for teachers and advanced students. Allen and Bacon. Bennett, Charles Edwin, nineteen oh seven. The Latin Language, a historical outline of its sounds, inflections, and syntax. Allen and Bacon. Bennett, Charles Edwin 1910. Syntax of Early Latin. Boston, Allen and Bacon. Buck, Carl Darling 1933. Comparative Grammar of Greek and Latin. Chicago, University of Chicago. Gildersleeve, Basil Lano, Lodge, Gonzalez 1900. Gildersleeve's Latin Grammar 3rd ed. New York, Boston, New Orleans, London, University Publishing Company. Lindsay, Wallace Martin 1894. The Latin Language, An Historical Account of Latin Sounds, Stems and Flexions. Oxford, Clarendon Press. Palmer, Leonard Robert 1988, 1954. The Latin Language. Norman, University of Oklahoma Press. Roby, Henry John 1872. A Grammar of the Latin Language from Plautus to Suetonius. Volume 1 2nd ed. London, Macmillan and Co. Wordsworth, John 1874. Fragments and Specimens of Early Latin, with Introduction and Notes. Oxford, Clarendon Press. Topic. Further reading Goldberg, Sander M. 2007. Antiquities Antiquity. In Latinitas Perennis. Volume 1, The Continuity of Latin Literature. Edited by Vim Verbal, Yannick Mays, and Jan Pappy, 17-29. Brill's Studies in Intellectual History 144. Leiden, The Netherlands, Brill. Lemke, Janet, 1973. Bronze and Iron, Old Latin Poetry from Its Beginnings to 100 BC. Berkeley, University of California Press. Mercado, Angelo, 2012. Italic Verse, A Study of the Poetic Remains of Old Latin, Feliscan, and Sibelic. Innsbruck, Institut für Sprechen und Literaturen der Universität Innsbruck. Vine, Brent, 1993. Studies in Archaic Latin Inscriptions. Innsbrucker Beträge zur Sprachwissenschaft 75. Innsbruck, Austria, Institut für Sprachwissenschaft der Univ. Innsbruck. Warmington, E. H. 1979. Remains of Old Latin, Rev. ed. 4 vols. Loeb Classical Library 294, 314, 329, 359. Cambridge, Massachusetts, Harvard Univ. Press. Warner, R. 1980. Word Order in Old Latin, Copulative Clauses. Orbis 29, No. 1-251-63. Topic. External links. Gippert, Joost, 1994-2001. Old Latin Inscriptions. In German and English. Titus Didactica. Retrieved 29 October 2009.